Hey guys, so today we're going to do some back-end programming and fix our login resolver so it works for both the web and for our uh, application in React Native. Now before we do that, I wanted to address one thing, and that is whenever you're registering on the phone, if you actually click on the URL, that the if you actually get sent an email and you click on the confirm email link, you might be redirected to, for example, um, this URL, right? Because this is URL uh, if you remember that we use for the Android emulator. Um, if that's the case it's because uh, you're receiving the request uh, from this URL. So this is our code right here in uh, start server so this is our backend code and what we're doing is we're getting the request protocol and the request host all that stuff to figure out who uh, where we're supposed to redirect the email so we're redirecting it to here. Um, this won't be a problem when we actually have people using it um, when we uh, put this server in production but if you'd like to get it working on the iOS or Android emulator if you have trouble you can actually just hard code localhost 4000 here um, probably HTTP in front instead of having this right here um, or you can have this as environment variable all of those are good options I'm gonna leave it like so because I'm fine uh, not having it work in the Android emulator Alright, so let's get started with the login resolver. So here is the schema.graphql for the login resolver right now. And instead of just returning an error now, I want to also return the session ID. So I'm going to create a type called login response. And it's going to send back um, possibly errors. So I'm going to just rename this to errors. And I'm going to say error. So uh, this is we get an array of errors back and I'm not putting a uh, exclamation mark there because sometimes we're not going to have errors and here I'm going to send back the session ID which is just going to be a string and again the session ID not may not always come back because if there's errors we're not going to be sending the session alright so instead of just sending errors back we're now going to send the login response and you are for sure going to get a response when you call this mutation, so we can put an exclamation mark there. Alright, so now we need to update our resolver right here. So instead of just returning, for example, error response, I now need to return errors. So errors, and that's our errors. And uh, same thing here errors. And that's good. Errors here. And errors here. And then at the very bottom, we're actually, so if everything goes correctly, we're going to send back the session ID as well. So we got no errors here, so we're going to send back the session ID. And we have access to the session ID from the request object. So we can just do request.session ID. So now on our login, uh, requests we can also ask for a session ID if we need it so this is all the server code that we need to change we want to head back to our controller now so we can close this stuff so I'm going to head over to the controller source modules login is the one we need to affect so now um, we need to change our query down here so instead of grabbing path and message there's an errors key and that's where we get path and message from and there's also a session ID that which we want so now in our login response here okay good we're logging it we should be getting an extra session ID so I'm gonna go ahead and restart not restart but just rebuild packages controller so we can see this Uh, and then we're going to run it and see if we can see this. Now, you can see it crashed because we had to do this. I'm not sure if we can just reload it and it'll be working. Uh, looks like it may. But uh, now that we get this session ID back, what we want to do is we want to save it in uh, secure storage on uh, Android or iOS, so our Re React Native app. Um, and let's let's see if we do get the session ID back so I'm gonna log in as Bob at Bob.com and uh, we get 
please confirm your email so I need to confirm my email with this guy uh, I'm gonna go over here and create a new one and if I come back to my server I think in my register I said I'm automatically yep I'm confirming true so I'm gonna create a new user Tom at Tom.com register him so now I'm gonna log in with Tom so Tom at Tom.com and actually we, we just got a little error or a little warning here so let's see what that's about also so whenever we get like you have to confirm your email right please confirm your email we should be showing that as an error uh, reason for that is we also need to change our uh, login controller code so the response here we expect login to be just a uh, array of errors but it's no longer an array of errors and now has a errors and session ID so I'm gonna print out errors and session ID here and if errors we're gonna normalize them okay. and you're gonna see TypeScript is not happy with this and the reason for that is we just have not upgraded our types so I forget what we called it but if we look at our schema and our schema package.json we have we call it gen types we can run that so that's over in our controller yarn gen types and that will update our types because we just added some new fields right here right so you need to upgrade your upgrade your TypeScript types when you do that so it knows about these fields that we're going to be getting alright so that worked now I've noticed whenever uh, I guess TypeScript caches the file so I just go ahead and if I open that file it seems to then uh, realize that those things are there and it updates here so just open up your schema.types if you don't see it reflected here right away alright but again we made some changes to that so let's go ahead and yarn build this um, and we need to add something to our controller because we don't care about the session ID for our website but we care about it for our app so our app wants to save this session ID so what I want to add is kind of like a callback if you will so uh, I guess we'll take it as a prop um, so this could be uh, call it on session ID and it's going to return a string and this is a optional field so I can say if there was errors we're gonna do we're gonna return otherwise there are no errors here um, so I'm gonna say this dot props dot on session ID so if that exists I'm gonna say this dot props dot on session ID and pass in my session ID and Oh, I expected one argument. I need to put session ID here. Um, so it's going to be a string, and then it's going to be anything. There we go. Did I mess it up? Oh, this this is sometimes not a. Uh, oh, it's possibly null. That's true. So right here, I'm going to also check. So if session ID. So there's no sense, oops, that should be an and. So session ID can sometimes be null and there's no point in saving the session ID in secure storage if it's null. So what we're going to do is we're gonna check if that we actually got a session ID back and we can reload this. Um, and if we do, this is basically gonna be a callback. So this function, we're only gonna pass in to our app. So our app is going to use this function to get the session ID, but our website isn't because it doesn't need to. Uh, but let's go ahead and make sure if I do bob at bob.com that the error message shows up now. Uh, cool, so we don't get that warning at the bottom anymore. And that's just because we need to fix up the stuff here. And now let me log in with Tom, who should be verified. Looks good. So he should get a session ID back. Um, here we go so here's the session ID and that's the thing that we want to save in secure storage alright so we're 
good with our controller. Our controller doesn't need to do anything else. I forget if I built it with the, uh, I don't think I, I need to build it one more time because I just added the session stuff here. So now in my uh, app, I wanna use this on session ID function. So this is gonna be in the login connector. You know, I'm gonna say on session ID. And I'm gonna say this dot save session ID. So we're gonna add that function right here, save session ID. And this is gonna take the, uh, we can call it SID, which is a string. So it's gonna take the session ID, which is gonna be passed as a parameter. And now we're gonna call secure storage. So we're gonna go ahead and import that from Expo. So from Expo, secure storage. Now, even hearing me talk about this, this is kind of a different thing, a different place where you can store items on the person's phone that is secure and encrypted. So in this case, we wanna save the session ID because uh, anyone who gets access to the session ID can basically use this user's account. So I'm gonna make sure and save it in a secure place. And we're gonna say secure store dot set item async. And again, you can see right here, it's a key value. So key can be SID and we're gonna save the SID here. Now we wanna put this in a constant place so that we can use it all over the place. I'm gonna create a, I guess in our shared is a good place. I'm gonna say constants, export const, and we'll call this um, uh, SID key, and I'm gonna call this ab SID. And then we're just gonna use that here. SID key. And uh, I think I messed something up here. Let me see where my controller, and maybe I just need to refresh it. Let me make sure my type matches up with what I expect over here. So I'm expecting a function that returns void that takes a string. I called it on session ID. And on session ID, that looks good. I'm gonna refresh over here and see if that works. But I'm also going to restart my TypeScript server and see what it says. So now whenever we log in, after if the login is successful, what we're going to do is it's gonna save this token. So now what we're gonna do when we wanna make authenticated requests is get this token from secure storage and send it in the header, uh, which we'll cover whenever we get to a place where we wanna authenticate and uh, send requests like that. Let's just go ahead and verify that login is still working since we added that. So Tom, at tom.com and uh, that looks good, nothing happened. Um, so I think it saved the token. We'll know for sure when we uh, use it later and uh, do authenticated requests. Now we can also verify that the, the website is still working because we did make some changes. If I come into login, we can inspect and I can log in as Tom, tom at tom.com and we can come to our console and we can see the token for Tom and Tom was able to log in okay. So perfect. So both the website and the app are still working. Notice we only made changes to the login controller, but we didn't really change the signature of how the login controller works except for adding an optional parameter. And since we made an optional, it doesn't break the website itself. Um, so that's it for this video guys. I'll see you in the next one.